ton on it. Two thousand ton. That's a lot. That's it not ain't, good. It ain't, it ain't going anywhere. Say so sorry. So today I'm working on an XC90 Volvo. Just trying to get this thing back on the road. All I'm supposed to be doing here is just a wheel hub bearing assembly. So you take the hub assembly and put it on there and just slide. That's how it should be. I mean, it should be a really easy job. But unfortunately, the CV axles become impossibly stuck in there. And you see where it's rusted into the splines? I knew the next day was going to be a real burner, so I started the night before by trying to tear this down. When I got stuck, I do what I do with everything that's stuck with rust. I sprayed it with PB Blaster. I let it soak overnight. So what I've been trying to do is get it to beat through. I put uh, electrical tape. This is like round four of the electrical tape. I put the back end of the socket in there and uh, the electrical tape holds it in there so that you can just beat it. You know, just hit it this way. You can see that it sustains some wear here. The experience wear. Anyway, long story short, I can't get that stupid CV axle to come out of there for anything. It's just not coming out. I've taken a dental pick and you know, pick, try to pick the rust out, take a screwdriver, scrape the rust out. It just hasn't come. So, last resort, uh, we're going to go to the oxyacetylene torch. I did try to burn out some of the old material with the propane torch that you see there, the blue one. Uh, but now we're going for the big time. This sucks. I've got all this amazing, awesome stuff I could be doing instead of this. Back in 2001, I had a 98 Mazda 626. I had the same problem, but it was no problem. I bought a new CV axle, I bought a steering knuckle from the junkyard, and $85 later, I was putting this car back together and I was good to go. I didn't have that option here. CV axles are usually pretty cheap. You know, you can get them between $50 and $100. This one is not cheap and it's not even available through most of the vendors I use only available through the dealership it was six hundred and thirty dollars i had to drive 40 miles to go get it and then i wouldn't get the core that's 75 dollars so i'm over 700 dollars for this axle and a long drive on top of all this hassle if i don't get this thing apart i have these punches set in here i have the assembly pulled out it took some banging to get it free but now that it's free um, i've got it supported out in a way so that i'll be able to have some distance to hit the CV axle back. I haven't used heat before on this because you don't want to get the CV boot hot. It's nice and cool on the back side, but it kind of gets the clock ticking once you get going on this. Alright, so I've got the tape on my socket to hold it in place. Just hit it. Sockets hurt. Ouch. It's not mushrooming it that I can tell. It's just really, really stuck. Alright, we'll do some more. hasn't even budged, not even a little bit. I don't know what to think. This thing just is not coming out. It's bad. Might just have to reassemble it and give up. I just never do that. I always win.
Jiminy Christmas. The new axle to replace the axle, if I can't get it out, if I have to just leave it, is about $700. So using a long flat chisel and a hammer, I got the CV axle to pop out from the differential. I don't know if these are going to fit through or not. Kind of hoping they were going to. Nothing's leaking. Out. So it's just, that's it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take it out to the press and see if I can press it out. I tried everything I could to get your CV axle out of the hub. I've tried heating it, I've tried pressing it, I've done everything I can. And so I'm going for the big hydraulic press and they're working on it now. This, this for that 06 uh, XC90. That thing is stuck. Well, like I said, I, I heated that whole thing cherry red. It had... Is that 2,000? Yeah. 2,000 ton on it. 2,000 ton, that's a lot. That's it, not it, ain't, it ain't going anywhere. Yeah, but the, but the only thing you could maybe even do is, is maybe cut it with a torch, but I doubt they'd take that as a, as a core. As a core. You, you could maybe give them this whole thing and say, hey. That's all I can do. Take it as a core. Yeah. I, I'm sure these guys probably got another house in wherever they were built. Yeah. Say, they'd have to take it as a core, I think, to say it's going to release. Cool. Well, I appreciate you trying. So the 2,000 ton press couldn't get it out. So, and I can't get the core out of it or anything else unless I get it off. And there's a chance that I might not have to drive 60 miles to go get another one and pay $600, $700 for it. So, I mean, I've cut all the way through on this part of it with the plasma cutter. I got through the second part and then it started to feel hot to the touch here. So I had to stop, you know, because I don't want to burn up the boot. The boot's clear back here and you can even take the boot off and re-grease it if the grease cooks. This is a problem. I've taken the plasma cutter to it, I cut through, I've got the hub off, it went everywhere when it did go. And this is what we're down to at the moment. So I just got to work on doing something to get a little relief here. What I might do is I have a little grace on this side, I might do a diagonal cut and then something this way with the uh, angle grinder with the skinny 4 inch, 4 and a half inch disc. Or I might just cut across here and then once I've done that, there's a seal. Then once I've done that, I might be able to cut this way and get a little release. So I'm back out at the press after having cut it with the plasma cutter. I had to lay it aside here. And I cranked it up to about max capacity. I think I probably had it about 15 tons, even with it cut and split. And it wouldn't go, wouldn't go, wouldn't go. And then all of a sudden, I go BAM! Like that. And it just made the loudest noise you've ever heard. And now we're going out. Oh, I'm out. All right. But yeah, it's just kicking, fighting, screaming the whole way. Not just the jack, the uh, bearing or whatever. Want to see down in there? The bearing part of it's pretty hammered. Can see that but I can't believe it was that hard to get out it was just so so rusted man oh man oh man I got it I win never give up never surrender so I got my socket set back in there and we're just on the highway we're just going now oh maybe not the thing is just stuck all the way that is the most stuck CV axle I or the diesel shop where I wanted to have it pressed on the 2000 ton press. That's the worst we've ever seen. It was just so, so stuck. I'm just going to take it out all the way. You see I got into it just a little bit with the plasma on that side. Same on this side. It's not going to hurt anything though. I'll just grind around the edges and just uh, clean these up and we'll be in great shape. Mushrooming. Not much, very little, and it's not clean or polished coming out, it's just rusted. Rusty, rusty. Ha, I win. 
This little Chinese $400 plasma cutter saved my bacon. See, I cut it down across, around, and back like a U-shape. And uh, that's what gave it the loosening effect enough to come off. And like I say, I got into the axle just a little bit. A lot of that's just slag that'll knock off. There's my socket I had. So it looks terrible now, but once I knock all the slag off, it'll just be a couple little pits. No big deal. I'm just going to throw in some extra information. You can tune out if you want. Uh, but on this 2006 Volvo XC90, but there's just a little spring hook. Like this little wire goes in there and hooks this way, and then there's little things that stick up. So you have, there you go, you can see it now. See that little uh, wire? So you have to push everything to the back of the vehicle, <clears throat> and then twist that, push it, and jig it out. It's not easy, but uh, it's possible. I never said it would be easy, I just said it would be possible. This is what it looks like right here. So, and these have to go on first before you do anything else, or else it's just a wrestling match you're going to lose. Or take way too long to do, and then you lose because you took too long. So, anyway, as far as this, uh, the rounded end of the bearing goes to the back. It's pointing like an arrowhead to the back, you can see that. And uh, 15 millimeter bolts here and here. You've got an ABS sensor wire that goes up in here, like this. You can see the little screw for it right there. This goes right there. And uh, you can see I've got the caliper supported by a wire. It just, uh, it's 14 millimeter on the bolts for this. There's a 10 millimeter bolt in that. Bam, there it is. To get that off, that was rusted on really bad too. And what you do is you take a metal hammer, which I don't have in here because I took it out to the press, but you just hit it between the, you don't have wheel studs sticking up, you just bam! Bam, bam, just back and forth hitting it like that and it'll come free. I promise. That's the trick to that. Um, you shouldn't have to take these off to do the hub bearing assembly or the CV axle. Um, but anyway, if you can avoid messing with these, I would avoid it because this spring right here is just ridiculously tight and so is this one. Um, anything else you want to see the back side? I'll show you the back side. There we go. See, not too bad. As far as getting these bolts out, what I do is I have this one, this one, and this one. I do all from this side, and I just use a wrench. I just have it stick out this way, and so on. Crack, 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 and then a ratcheting wrench and zip them out. This one, you have to run the wrench down this way. You have to run it underneath from this side, and then you can uh, zip it out with a long extension and a 15 millimeter socket wobble, you see like this. These are a lifesaver for getting stuff out like that. And I wasn't even going to video this, but this one is the hardest I've ever had. So I thought, let's make a video on it. Probably save somebody some hassle. Anyway, I was supposed to be, it's like 2 o'clock now. And I've just got it torn down. That's it. Started last night. Oh, it's 1 o'clock. So it's 1 o'clock. I just had it torn down. That funny original is ginger. <laughs> But uh, it's 1 o'clock and I just have it torn down. I could have had this done last night. I started it at about 8 p.m. And I was just going to whip it out and be done, you know, by 10. Easy. And, uh, yeah, it's 1 in the afternoon. I started this this morning. I got out here early at 8 or 7.45. I've just been hitting it like crazy since. So here's what the end of our axle half shaft looks like now. When I zoom in real close, you can see the pits. I mean, it looks like it was on the bottom of the ocean or something. It was just really, really rusted. You can see all the pits and all the little marks and things here. It's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be smooth like this. This is how the casting was. But anyway, it was just so, so rusted. So let's get in real fine detail. Now here's what I did to get this back looking good. I took a Dremel and I used these little, these Dremel Heavy Doobie cutoff wheels, number 420. So you take your Dremel tool and you just trace each of these and you just take out all the rust in the low spots. I've found that that's usually what causes it, you know, getting stuck the way they were. So you go through and you just do all of those and clean them up and make them look good. So you take the new hub assembly See, doesn't that look awesome? It looks beautiful. So you take the hub assembly and put it on there and it just slide. That's how it should be. I mean, it should be a really easy job. It wound up being an enormous headache, um, but that's how easy it's supposed to be. Just like that. 
Um, the other thing that I did that I didn't tell you about yet is I took I use a bench grinder with a wire wheel. You can do something in your drill, but it's just nowhere near as satisfying, convenient, or anything. I use this all the time, all the time. Um, but basically, you just take your axle, put your safety glasses on, uh, get a little uh, mask on, and just go through and just bust it on the wire wheel, and it causes all the high spots to be taken off without taking off a bunch of material. So. Anyway, that's how you get it to where you can reuse the CV axle that's been rusted in there so bad. This is the worst that I've ever seen. I don't think they get any worse than this um, without being on the bottom of the ocean. I mean, it was just packed with rust. But uh, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're having to go through the same thing, sorry, dude, that sucks. So, you know, just a pain to quote something like this and to have such a scope creep. Scope creep is the initial scope or how big the job's supposed to be and then it just creeps and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You see that a lot in the automotive repair industry. So there's some, uh, there's a $10,000 uh, word for you that you get in uh, business school is a uh, scope creep. You're welcome. You see the end of the axle. I had to drill that a little bit because it was mushroomed down and the bolt wouldn't fit in it. Uh, but now it is ready to rock. Good to go. Look at that shiny new hub. I got the bolt in there good because I drilled out the end of it. Backside's looking good. You see the caliper bracket bolts here. ABS, everything's tightened by hand. I got my bracket back on. So we're at 8 millimeter, 13 millimeter on the bracket, 13 millimeter on the bolts here, 14 millimeter on the end bolt. And looking good. There's a trick getting the other side of that CV axle out. I greased the end up. You have to clean them really well with brake cleaner, blow them out with air, and then put grease all over where the seal is. But most especially grease on that little uh, C ring on the end of the axle, otherwise it floats around, it won't go in. So you have to get it to where it floats in the middle, rotate the axle until it splines up, and then just kind of use the CV axle as a slide hammer and just gently tap it in. Um, to get it out, I put a chisel right in the middle of it here, and uh, like say the flashlight's a chisel at this angle, and had to hit it, you know, like as, as if it was a drift. That's how you get it out. It did not want to come out. Both ends of the CV axle were about as stuck as they get. It turned out perfect though. I'm really happy with the result. So, working on this Volvo, I still got to hand tighten the the lug bolts and the center bolt. But the way you tell a hub bearing assembly is bad or which side it is, this one just droned in the center. I couldn't tell left or right to be honest with you. And all the sound dampening, it's just tough. So you spin the wheel and then at the same time you reach back here. You can see the, the coil spring for the suspension. You put your hand on the spring. I'll usually grab between two coils. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. I just grab two coils and then spin the wheel. So I don't know if this is going to catch it very well. I'm spinning the wheel and I'm grabbing the coil with my hand over here. And before you could feel like a bump, 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 like a pattern. Now it's just smooth. When I felt the other wheel, you see the wheel on the other side there? When I do the same thing on that side, I didn't feel anything. So I don't feel anything on both sides now. And when we look at the old hub assembly, you get to see a little bit more detail on it than most because I had to cut the thing off with the plasma cutter and the angle grinder. But when you get into the hub assembly, you can see a bunch of wear marks. I think I just obliterated it, but when I first had it apart, I could see a bunch of, you see the little bumps, the little bite marks right here and here and here. That's what the bearing looks like when it's bad. So, of course it's way bad now, but you see all the rust that was present. Once it rusts and there's no grease, that's when you get those uh, marks and they just get worse and worse. That is without doubt the hardest hub bearing assembly, you know, spec slash stuck CV axle I've ever had in my life. I've done a lot of these, none this hard. So this is the bolt that holds the end of the CV axle into the hub. And there's no retaining device, there's no clip, there's nothing to bend, so you have to do a chemical one. You know, we're used to these mechanical uh, lock washers and stuff. So 
you have to do something for that so you just put on the Loctite yellow is preferred or blue will work um, but you just go ahead and put that on like this you don't want to use an impact this is a really lightweight 3 8 drive impact setup but just want to torque it and with the vehicle on the ground you just torque it down like that put the cat back in cool thanks for watching my video <laughs> this one was this one was involved a lot of blood and sweat and tears and stuff I don't think I cried but I was frustrated but I sweat a lot it's 100 degrees today thanks for watching my video and uh, cheers Mm-hmm.